What's good everybody? Chris. Chris goes outdoors with Anna Banana. Hi. We're out here. Due to popular demand, Anna's sacrificing her time and dryness to come out here and film a setting up camp in the rain video. So it's uh, nice and rainy here in New England. A very balmy 40 degrees. It's pretty much exactly what you can plan to see, especially at the beginning of the trail. Um, very close to freezing temperatures sometimes here and there. And uh, rain which is miserable to hike in, it's miserable to set up camp in. So we're gonna show you a very unideal setup this time. So let's get moist. When it's raining like this and it's 40 degrees, you just wanna set up camp and you wanna get it done fast. I found a spot here that will suffice. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but we're gonna make it work because it's raining and we wanna be dry and inside of our tent. So first things first, before I take anything off, I'm gonna look around, try to remove any large debris that may be in the way of where I want to set up. So I'm going to aim to set up right in this area here. So it looks relatively flat-ish. So we'll see what we can do. So first trekking pole is out at the end of the trail. I was not using my second one, but I do kind of need it for this tent. So I'm going to get that one set. And usually in the rain, I would have both of them out and I would set them to the specific height needed while I was walking to camp if it was raining. That way, when I got there, I didn't have to mess with adjusting the poles to the different sizes. Got the tent, got the stakes out front here. Take it out and get this thing set up. Do it as quickly as possible. So the least amount of water leaks in. So we got the tent set up. For the sake of uh, the video, I would typically roll the doors down to keep all the water out, but if I do that, you're not really going to be able to see anything else. So, extra stakes, we throw in there, good enough. And then, the food bag is my pillow, electronics, toss in there as well. We've got a coat, we got some rain pants, but next up, I want to get my sleeping pad in there, and I want to get my sleeping bag. So, typically now, I would go run and grab water before I uh, got inside the tent and everything. So, after that, I would jump in the tent. So we're in the tent, usually, I mean, you could, in theory, if you have a blow-up sleeping pad, you could blow it up outside of the tent. But for me, I just found it better, especially in like super, super downpours. It was just easier to blow up while you're inside and protected from the rain. So, we'll uh, give it a blow up. All right, it's now at the point where it's completely blown up, so I would just slide over a little bit. Like that, and let it lay down. And then sit on top of it for the rest of the fun stuff. So, typically after that, I would take my quill, which you can see here, Get this bad boy out and let that kind of loft up a little bit over here. Sometimes I would take the butt pad out and I would leave it, say, right here at the doorway. That way I could leave some stuff out here if I needed it to be dry once the doors were uh, folded down. And uh, it also gave me a uh, place out here to leave some stuff to cook. And some of you may think, well, you can be cooking your tent, you know, bears are gonna come eat you, and yada, yada, yada. And uh, yeah, you got a point. I'm not gonna say you don't, but there were more than a few occasions when it was downpour raining that I would cook right outside the vestibule in my tent, so. Now for this, I would keep my doors at least partially open, just because you want to get some ventilation. So I would probably keep one of them down a little bit. And that would typically go out to about here. And I would leave one of them down, so that way I had some wind cover for this, but it also let all the uh, carbon dioxide, carbon monox monoxide, it let that kind of ventilate out, and that way it's not gonna kill you. And that way you can eat from within your tent and you can stay relatively dry as well. And other than that, there's not much else different from a typical camp setup, rain or no rain, the only major, major difference in the rain is that you want to get it done as quickly as humanly possible. Because if you do not, 
it will pay. It will pay in moistness, in wetness, and uncomfortableness. The inside of my tent, the rain's coming down pretty hard right now, and the inside of my tent is completely dry. So the quicker you get your actual tent set up down, the better, because you're gonna be more efficient at it, the less rain is gonna have a chance to get in. So once you're all settled in to camp, you can take your, you know, your rain clothes off, the uh, skirt. And then, sometimes in camp, I would zip up the rain skirt like this, this is one of the Z-Pax ones, but some of the other brands, I think, do the same thing. And it has a uh, draw cord here, so you could cinch this down all the way. And it essentially turns the bag into a gigantic uh, kind of trash bag. A lot of times, I would just put it in the rain skirt like this. And then I would just leave this right outside there. So it kind of blocks any rain spray from coming in, keeps your bag dry and it uh, keeps you good to go. You just get back in your tent at the end of the day, take all your wet stuff off. Uh, for some tents, with more room, you may be able to hang them up somewhere within your tent. I typically just kind of left them off to the side. Outside here, I'd hang them on my backpack, and that worked for me. So it should keep you dry, should keep you all well and set up overnight. I'm going to show you how I break it down. Not gonna lie, breaking down in the rain is no fun. It is a miserable, miserable experience, but Whatever, it's all part of the trail. I'll show you how I went about doing that anyway. So, I'm content. Yeah. I'm waking up now. I would go get my bear bag, bring it back in, eat a little snack. I would take my bag out of its rain skirt protector and bring it just inside of my shelter. I would wrap up my sleeping bag first. The sleeping bag you want to keep as dry as possible. You definitely don't want it getting wet if you can prevent it. I would get it inside of the compactor bag right here in my bag. Because again, you want to keep that dry as possible. If I didn't need clothes for that day, if there was stuff I know that I wasn't planning on wearing, I would also put that down into the compactor bag just to make sure that all stays dry. And then the last thing in my bag right now, I have this right here. This is the stuff sack for the tent. We'll keep that outside. The actual butt pad, I like putting on before I got everything done because it helps keep my backpack upright. And then, one more time, the most awful noise known to any hiker. Letting the sleeping pad deflate. Still within the tent. And keep in mind, these doors would be closed, so you wouldn't be getting wet down here. I would uh, roll this up, get the uh, excess air out of it. So we got as most of the air out of this as we possibly could, so we'll throw this back in the bag. I got my little electronics bag here last, and then we're left with only tent stakes and the water bottles. So we'll put the water bottles in. I will temporarily close this up just a bit. I do have a pack cover, so while you're putting the tent away, if you want, you can put the pack cover on. Now again, with putting a tent away, same with setting it up, you just want to do it as quickly as possible. Avoid getting uh, any excess water in that you can. And as far as putting it away, in the rain, I saw people, Cuban fiber, still nylon, whatever your tent's made of, there's gonna be water in it. You, you can try to shake it out. I saw so many people in the rain trying to shake their stuff out to like dry out, and I'm pretty sure that they just make it more wet. So I would always just pack my tent up straight up. I wouldn't try to get water off it at all. I might give it one quick shake, and other than that, whatever. <laughs> if it's wet, it's wet. So I would just take this up like this, and I know with some, uh, of the double wall tent, you might have to fold it up or whatever, but for the Cuban ones, nah, I just uh, would stuff it right back in, even wet like this. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't dry it out. So the only real way to dry it out is to wait until it gets sunny again. So if you're lucky, it's raining in the morning, you might catch some sun during say the middle of the day, and then, you know, you can sit down for lunch or something and air it out over a rock or a tree. Um, I did that a bunch of times, so it definitely does help. 
and I know from my own experience that the uh, Cuban tents dry out pretty quick. So, you know, sit down for maybe half an hour lunch, keep this thing in direct sunlight, and it'll probably be good to go again. And even uh, if you get to camp later in the night, there were times I would set this up and it would still be wet inside. As long as it wasn't raining at night, I would just leave the doors open for a while before I went to bed, let the uh, wind blow through, and a lot of times it would dry out just like that, so. And you got two options, at least I did in my case. A lot of people would put this directly back into their backpack. Well, it's a gross, soppy, wet mess. I uh, typically would prefer not to do this if I could. Um, on my backpack, anyway, I have a strap that goes over the top like this. If any of you watch my AT videos, it was very much full of Cheetos most of the time, but when it wasn't, it was for a mid-layer typically, or cinch that down, keep the wet tent outside your bag, that way you're not getting everything soaked inside. If you got a pack cover, throw the pack cover on, don't, whatever, I don't care, whatever floats your boat. Voila! Resize your trekking pole, in my case, put your rain skirt back on, and you're off to the races! You will officially have set up and de-set up your camp in the rain. It's not too hard, it's not too crazy, just get used to setting up your stuff as quickly as possible. The quicker you can do it, the better off you'll be. So, anyways, hope the video was helpful. If it was, drop it a like. Consider uh, commenting and subscribing if you thoroughly enjoyed it. You can also follow me on Instagram at Chris Goes Outdoors. And until next time, take care and uh, we'll see you in the next one.